Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 111 of ASP.NET video series. In this video, we'll discuss about navigating to a specific month and an year in an ASP.NET calendar control. This question was asked by three to four YouTube subscribers of my channel. There are several reasons or situations in real time where we need to navigate to a specific month and an year in an ASP.NET calendar control. For example, if the date of birth of a person is in the year 1960, we may have to click on the calendar control several times to navigate to that year. Now, just imagine, you know, we are in the uh, year 2013, January 2013. Let's say I'm filling a web form here and the date of birth of a person is in the year 1960. Now, if I have to select the date of birth of the person from this calendar control, just imagine how many clicks would it take to actually navigate to that year using this uh, previous month button. I have to keep on clicking until I reach, uh, you know, 1960. I'm still in 2011. Okay, so obviously uh, the built uh, the built-in UI that the standard ASP.NET control has, you know, doesn't allow me to skip years and months. But then we can provide true drop-down list controls like this, where the user can select an year. For example, at the moment we are in 2011. Let's say I want to go to 2001. As soon as I select the year, look at that, uh, the calendar changes to January 2001. But in 2001, let's say I want to go to the you know maybe month October. I select October and the calendar changes to October 2001. All the user needs to do right now, if the date of birth is 10th October 2001, I select the date and click on this button, I get that particular date. Okay. Similarly, if you want to navigate to the year 1960, all you have to do is populate this drop-down list, uh, you know, that year, and then you will be navigated. So let's see how to achieve this. And it's very simple to achieve this. All you have to do is have two drop-down list controls, populate them with the years and months that you want, and then change the visible date property of this calendar control programmatically. That's it. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. So obviously I need a drop down list control to display years. So I'm going to have this text year and then drag and drop a drop down list control and along the same lines let's put some space there and then maybe I want uh, some static text month and then a drop down list control there as well. And the next thing is we want the calendar control itself. So let's drag and drop the calendar control and then finally a button control okay and then let's change the text of this button control maybe get selected date okay so now the f the f the next step is to basically populate this year uh, drop down list and to do that i'm going to get my years you know instead of adding them programmatically on the web form i'm going to get my uh, the years from an xml file Okay, so within this project, I have this folder called data folder. And then within that folder, I have this years.xml file. And if you look at this XML file, we have years root node. And within that, we have several years here. And each year has got number and value properties, I mean elements. Okay, so we have from 2000 to 2013, you can have as many years as you want within this XML file. Now, if you want to uh, add an XML file to your project, all you need to do is right click on that folder, add a new item, and then click on the data tab. And then from there, select XML file, give it years.xml, and copy and paste this XML data there. I'll have this XML data on my blog, so you can copy it from there. Similarly, I'm going to have another XML file for months to store months. And if you look at months, I have you know months root node, and then uh, month, and within which we have the month number, and then the month name. Okay, so obviously what I want to do is I want to read this year's XML data from this XML file and display that within this web form. Okay, so how do we do that? To read data from an XML file, the simplest way is to use the data set. So I'm going to use the data set and data set is present in system.data namespace. So let's import that and let's create an instance of the data set object. So data set, let's call that DS years is equal to new data set. And what we want to do, we want to read the XML file. So DS years, we have a method called read XML. All you have to do is specify the name of the XML file. So I'm going to use server.map path, which maps the virtual path to the physical path. So the uh, file is present in the root directory of this web application project within a data folder. And the XML file name is years.xml. OK. So once we have the XML file, all we need to do is uh, for the drop-down list, years drop-down list, 
so years drop down list is called as drop down list one so let me call it as drop down list one dot data source we will set ds years as the data source and finally call the data bind method that's it but then before that we also need to set the data text field and the data value field within the years drop down list which column you want to be displayed as the text and which value you want to be displayed as a, I mean you want as a value within the drop down list we'll have to specify that so drop down list one dot data text field is equal to in both the cases I'm gonna use year number so I will just say number here and similarly we also need to specify the data value field and that's also going to be the number that's it so let me go ahead and run this actually let's specify this before we bind the drop-down list and we are done okay so once we run this now we should actually see there is an error okay we need another closing parenthesis now let's run this when the web form loads up as you might expect the years drop down list should be populated so I have all the years from 2000 to 2013 along the same lines I need to populate the months drop down list let's go ahead and do that now you know instead of having all this code here I'm gonna ex uh, you know encapsulate this inside a method right click on the selection and then select extract method and I'm gonna call this load years okay I click OK so it creates a private method for me automatically along the same lines I'm going to create another method called load months okay so let's create that private method so private void I'm going to call that load months and then what is this method going to do it's going to read the XML months.xml file and then load that data into the months drop down list actually um, let's get rid of this one and that one okay so I'm gonna call this data set as DS months new data set and we want to read the XML data from months.xml file okay so let's copy the name of that and then specify that here so months.xml and then within the months file what is the data text field the data text field is going to be name and the data value field is going to be number so data text field is going to be name and data value field will be number and then we want to and that's going to be drop down list 2 okay and similarly drop down list 2 dot data source and drop down list 2 dot data bind and the data set is going to be months here okay and what we want to do we want to invoke this method here so load months and we want to call these methods only when it is the initial get request because we don't want to be doing this on every page load on a post back we don't want to do this we only want to do this on the initial get request upon post back since this control is uh, added at design time it's going to maintain its state for us automatically anyway so let me go ahead and run this at this time you should see both the years and months populated from those respect to XM, XML files so I have the months and I have the years now what should happen as soon as I change the year you know look at this when I select 2008 the calendar visible date should automatically be changed to 2008 so let's see how to do that obviously it should happen when the selection in the drop-down list changes so I should set the auto post back property of this drop-down list control to true so let's go ahead and do that on web form 9 I'm gonna set the auto post back property for both of the drop-down list controls to true so I selected both of them and I'm gonna change both of them together so save that and then when the drop-down list selected index changes double click that to generate the event handler when the selected index is changed on that drop-down list what we want to do this is a very simple code one line of code calendar one dot visible date is equal to look at that the visible date property actually expects a date time to be passed in so I'm gonna say new date time and we can specify year month and day okay so let's retrieve the year from the drop-down list so int year is equal to we want to retrieve that from the years drop-down list and the ID of the drop-down list is drop-down list 1 so I'm gonna say drop-down list 1 dot selected value we need the value 
and then we want to convert that to an integer so convert dot to int 16 that's it and along the same lines I'm going to retrieve the month as well so let's change the variable name to month and convert dot to int 62 uh, to in 16 and the month is going to come from drop down list 2 and we want to retrieve the value not the text because the text will show the month name okay so finally what's left out we have to change the visible date and I'm going to specify the year as year look at that I'm using this constructor of that date time class year and then we need to specify month which we already have from the drop down list and the day I'm going to hard code it as one okay so that's it Along the same lines, whenever the month changes within the drop-down list, I want to do exactly the same thing. So let's copy and paste that there. Okay, so we are done. Now finally, when the user clicks this button, what we want, we want the date that the user has selected. So calendar1, we want to print that onto the web form, so response.write calendar one how do we get the selected date using selected date property and I want to convert that to a short date string I just want the date and time I mean I just want the date I don't need the time so I'm converting it to short date string and another thing that we can actually do is we can actually say calendar one dot selected date is equal to also the same thing so what's going to happen the calendar will be changed to that date the visible date and then on that date it will select the first day of that month and year okay and then if the user wants to change that they can change it so okay so that's the code okay so let's go ahead and run this and we should have the behavior that we are expecting so the web form loads up and look at this currently I am in 2013 and I can choose maybe I want to navigate to 2001 look at this as soon as the year changes the calendar flips to January 1 2001 but I don't want to go into January I want to maybe go to November so November 2001 by default the first date is selected but let's say the birth date is November 11 I can select that date click the calendar and I'm able to skip months and years select the date that I want very easily in fact you can actually navigate all of this HTML and all of this HTML and all of this code into its own user control. In the previous sessions of this video series, we have seen how to create user controls, how to add them to web form and use them there. And in fact, we also have discussed how to load these user controls dynamically. So if you're new to user controls, I would strongly encourage you to watch those video sessions first. And then once you have this code encapsulated inside an user control, you can reuse them on any web form in, in your entire web application project. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.